It's wonderful to be here in the presence of God. Amen. And we're going to get straight into what the Lord has asked us to do. So shalom to you all. The Spirit of God is strengthening us. The Spirit of God is breathing over you, praise God, and increasing your might, increasing your wisdom. And so let us pray. Spirit of God, we say thank you once again for your presence, for your power. Thank you once again for ushering us, oh God, into this season, for transitioning your people into the place, Heavenly Father, of their promise of marriage and of motherhood in Jesus' mighty name. We give you glory. And we say thank you, Father, for performing miracles, for performing marriage miracles, for performing miracles of restoration and of love, for performing miracles, Heavenly Father, of reconciliation and of resurrection. I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ that it is possible. There is nothing impossible, should I say, with you to us that believe in Jesus' name. As it has been written in Luke 135, we give you the glory and we give you the praise that they shall be a performance of those things things that you have told us and that we have received of you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for setting us up for such a time as this. And thank you for announcing, oh God, your divine plans over our lives and over this season as wise in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen and amen. So the word of the Lord comes forth. I want you to just engage with God. Amen. And realize that God himself is a spirit is a spirit. Amen. He's a spirit. And so he uses us in the earth because we've been given authority in the earth. He uses you and he uses your mouth. Amen. He uses your actions. He uses your feet. He uses your ears, your eyes. Amen your hands. He uses us in the physical realm in order to establish his counsel, who is a spirit, amen, from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. And so it's important that anytime you hear the word of God, you don't just shrug it off and say, oh, I've heard this before, because that's something that we can do. I've heard John 3, 16 before. I've heard this before. Number one, repetition brings fortification and repetition also brings revelation, amen. But number two, it's because the spirit of God himself is looking to do something. And so Jesus said to us in Luke 18, man ought always to pray and never give up. So he came in by praying people. Simeon and Anna were the praying people, the prophets in the temple that were praying until they saw the salvation of the Lord and the Redeemer. Amen. And so they pray constantly their entire lives to see the word of promise come to pass. Amen. People like Caleb and Joshua, even though they were frustrated by their brethren, and we found out already that the Lord said that one of the things that brings delay, all right, is not just lack of faith, it's not just the devil, but it's actually the brethren's behavior and unbelief. So when you're attached to people who don't believe, you need to disconnect. Even Jesus Christ himself, anytime he wanted to perform a miracle in the house of people that were crying a miracle of resurrection, he put them out. Peter did the same thing when he raised up Tabitha amen, in the book of Acts. What did he do? He put them all out. And so it's vitally important we understand environment matters. I want you to say this and I want you to post it in the comments. Environment matters when it comes to the power of the supernatural, when it comes to the power of the spirits, environment matters. This is the month the Lord has already told us and decreed. It is the month of the move of the Holy Ghost. And so if you want to see a move of the Holy Spirit, environment matters. There's no point saying to God, we've heard this before, because God is a spirit. And as he has spoken it once, once have I spoken, twice have I heard. So environment matters. If you have the prophets of the older years, if you have the prophets in the ancient times that spoke things 400 years before time, they could have said, we've heard this before. Isaiah has said this before. Jeremiah said this before. And many of them did not understand or did not apprehend it or did not believe it. But it came to pass with those that believed it and stood with it and prepared for it. Amen. So environment matters. It is vitally important. And I'm just laying this foundation for you all to understand that it is important that you tune your ear to what the spirit of God is saying. Jesus said, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. He who has an ear, meaning if you want to understand, tune your ear to understand, which means that if you are hearing the frequency of the spirit of God, if there's anything that is within you that is a witness of this time and season in your life, then you need to tune up and tune in. Because at the end of the day, it can only come to pass for you when you tune up and tune in. You can tune out if you want, or you can tune in. Everyone has that choice in life. Amen. So it's depending on the program, the station you want to be on. Do you want to be on the station of 
of compromise, the station of I'm not sure, the station of unbelief, or the station of justification, whatever station you want to be on, or you want to be on the station of the move of the Holy Ghost. If you're on the station of the move of the Holy Ghost, on the station of the supernatural power of God, on the station where God himself is raising up and calling for supernatural wives to arise and for calling for kings to arise in the earth. If you're on that station, then you have to learn how the power of the supernatural works. It is called supernatural marriage for a reason. It is not called natural marriage. There are natural ways of doing things, amen? And there are supernatural ways of doing things. And there's a natural element of supernatural marriage and there's a supernatural element of supernatural marriage. But the issue with supernatural is that it involves the power of the spirit. It involves the initiations of God. It involves the choices of God. It involves the seasons of God. It involves the word and the will of God. And so it means that we have to align. We have to position. We have to prepare. We have to submit to what God is doing and what God is saying at every step of the way. Amen. And so he kept on saying to Moses, prepare the people. I want to do a wonder. He said to Joshua, prepare them because I'm coming in to do wonders among you. He kept on telling his people even now, prepare your spirit, prepare yourself because he's saying to us, prophesy it is wedding time. That is actually what the Spirit of God kept on ringing in my ears. He woke me up, prophesy it is wedding time. Not prophesy I'm getting married. Not prophesy my king is coming. We've prophesied the king is coming. We've prophesied that twice. We prophesied last year and we prophesied this year as the Spirit of God gave us utterance. Now the Lord is very specific and he said to me, the specific prophecy I need to hear in the realm of the Spirit, I need to hear in the atmosphere, it is wedding time. It is wedding time. Amen. He said, prophesy it is what? Wedding time. Prophesy it is wedding time. You need to prophesy that over your life. You need to prophesy that over your marriage. You need to prophesy that over this time, this season, this week, this month. You need to prophesy it. Amen. In Jesus name. Announcing God's seasons and times comes by decree comes by declaration, comes by edicts, and comes by prophecy. This is how God announces his seasons. It comes by what? Decree. It comes by declaration. It comes by edicts. It comes by prophecy. And so you see that right from the beginning of time, and God said, amen, and there was light. And the Bible says that the earth was null and void without form, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light, praise God, in Genesis 1, and there was what? Light. The Spirit of God was there, but the spirit of God does not move by himself. He moves on the word. So you've got to prophesy what the word is telling you to say. He said, Ezekiel prophesied this. He said, Amos prophesied this. He said, Vivian prophesied this. He has given me the prophecy. I mean, do you want to be married? That was the first statement he gave me to decree across the nations on YouTube. Do you want to be married? And then he, he said, prophesy singles. It is time to get married. And then after about a year and a half or two years, he said, prophesy side. Are you ready to be married? Are you ready to be married? Are you prepared to be married? Meaning get yourself ready and prepared. And he began to put us into the courses. Now he's prophesying that it is wedding time. It is wedding time. This is not the first time the Lord has said it. Many have been married already. Many have entered in already. But the Spirit of God is talking to the body of Christ. He's talking to the masses. He's talking to you who are not yet married. And he's talking to you who are being reconciled. He's also talking to the body of Christ. It is wedding time. What season, what dispensation are we in? It is wedding time. It is time for the bride of Christ to prepare for the bridegroom King Jesus Christ. It is time to get into alignment. Alignment is the assignment of every man and woman of God, irrespective of what your role is in the body of Christ, something about what you're doing has been called to prepare the bride for the bridegroom king, amen, Jesus Christ. And so it is wedding time. And he's saying prophesy it is wedding time. So it has a two-part meaning. It has a global meaning to the body of Christ. Christians that are living in compromise, it is time to come out. It is wedding time. All right, Christians that are claiming Christ but living in the world, it is time to prepare yourself for your bridegroom king. It is time to stop being a foolish virgin. It is time to store up extra oil because it is wedding time. It is wedding time. He said, amen, in Revelation 19, 7, he says, let us be glad and rejoice, amen, for the marriage supper of the Lamb has come. Praise the Lord. Amen. And his wife has made herself ready. Praise God. And so it is important for you to know the time and the season. You see, there's no point understanding prophecy or hearing prophecy if you're not willing to prepare and if you're not willing to engage in the strategy that God is giving you. 
There is no point. We've got itching ears and the itching ears, we always want to hear something new, but we never want to do anything about it. We always want to hear something new, but we never want to get ourselves engaged and involved. Listen, God is a spirit and the way God engages with you is by his word. I said my word to heal you. I said my word to deliver you. I said my word ahead of you to prepare you. Amen. I said my word so you can prepare and you can pray into it and receive strategy. That is the point of prophecy. Pray is the Lord. That is the point of prophecy, announcing God's seasons. The second part of that is prophesy it is wedding time. He's talking to every supernatural wife and supernatural husband. A prophesy it is wedding time is telling even the deaf to hear the word of the Lord. Prophesy it is wedding time is prophesying to the dry bones. Prophesy it is wedding time is going to resurrect the dead. Prophesy it is wedding time is going to usher in your husband. Prophesy it is wedding time is going to restore your wife. Prophesy it is wedding time is going to empower and equip the Holy Spirit to move supernaturally in your circumstance at this time. So prophesy over your own destiny. It is wedding time. Prophesying it is wedding time. It's going to force the power of God, amen, or it's going to give the capital to the spirit of God to bring forth what you're decreeing and what you're saying, because that is the way God operates. Amen. He, he operates the same way for healing, the same way for deliverance, the same way for miracles, the same way for opening the eyes of the blind, the same way for opening the ears of the deaf, the same way for raising up the lame, the same way for cleansing the leper, the same way, amen, for healing people, the same way for doing signs, wonders, miracles, the same way for preaching the gospel. It is prophecy. It is prophecy. It is prophecy. As John the Baptist was the forerunner and way maker of Jesus, who was the word of God, prophecy is your John the Baptist and is your way maker of the Holy Spirit. All right. As John the Baptist, listen, was a way maker. He made a way for the ushering in of Jesus. He made a way for the ushering in of the Messiah. Your prophesying is making a way for the ushering in of the move of the Spirit. You can listen to this and say, I've prayed before and I've prophesied before. Or you can understand it is the Spirit that is directing this word. It is the Spirit that says, rise up again. And the Bible says he tells his prophets early in the morning. He sends them daily. He sends them daily. So if you are getting tired of hearing the prophetic word or you're getting tired of hearing the same thing you cannot engage with what god is saying because he's woken up my ear amen just like prophet isaiah said he said he awakened my ear morning by morning praise the lord amen and so he put a word on my mouth and he taught me what to say praise god so i may know what to say to the people who are weary amen and so god is saying that john the baptist was a way maker for jesus your prophecy is a way maker for the holy ghost your prophesying is a way maker. So what are you saying? What are you not just saying out of your mouth? What are you saying in your self-talk? What are you saying? What are you saying? Praise the Lord. Prophecy is John the Baptist. I'm the way maker of the Holy Spirit. Now, there's two types of prophecy. There's future prophecy that sets you up for what is to come and gives you the opportunity to pray and to prepare for what is ahead. And then there is now prophesying that makes it possible by the power of the Holy Spirit. So this is not future prophecy. This is now prophesying that makes it possible by the power of the Holy Ghost. Remember, the Spirit of God has already taught us as supernatural wise in this academy. The Spirit of God has already equipped you to understand, amen, that when you begin to hear the Word of God and then you begin to prepare, that the Lord first of all waits for everyone to pay the price first and then in comes the power. Power does not move without a price being paid. And so as soon as Jesus himself was baptized in Matthew chapter three, the Bible says in Matthew chapter four and in Luke four, that the spirit is the one that drove him into the wilderness. Why? There was a price to pay before he came out in Luke 4, 14 in the power. You cannot receive power without the preparation. And so if you've taken 10 years to prepare or five years to prepare and to get into alignment, and now God is saying prophecy it is wedding time. Know that it is time for power to move over your life. It is time for power to resurrect your circumstance. It is time for power to bring your divine connection. It is time for power to cause your husband to come together, to cause wife to come together. It is time for healing. It is time for reconciliation. It is time for resurrection. But now he's saying that the power is going to move based on what you're prophesying. You're prophesying. So this is not a future prophecy. This is a now prophesying God is talking about. 
There are different types of prophecy. Amen. There was a time of Amos. He said, Amos 3, 8, the lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God hath spoken. Who can but prophesy? He said to him, I was a sheep breeder. I was minding my business. I was tending to my fields. I was tending to my flocks. And the spirit of God arrested me and began to roar in my spirit. So I cannot help but prophesy. That is what now prophesying is. Now prophesying is the spirit of God coming upon a man, coming upon a woman to decree his intentions and also to accelerate them into manifestation based on the fact that there is a people out there who've already been prepared. So I know there's a people out there who've already been prepared. I know there's a people out there that have waited on the Lord. And the Bible tells us when you wait on the Lord, you renew your strength and then you rise. Amen. You rise on wings as eagles and then you run without getting weary. You walk and you don't faint. Amen. Praise God. And so there is a system to the supernatural. Those that have waited on God, Ezekiel was there for days at a time. Praise the Lord. When the Lord said to him for, was it 90 days to lie on one side and then to lie on another side. So he was in the presence of God in in the beginning of the uh, of the book of Ezekiel for days at a time. And what God was doing was opening his spirits and opening his eyes to be able to see what was going on. And then he began to say prophesy. So now the power came because he had done the waiting. He had paid the price. Now, if you've not paid the price, you need to join our next round of the Supernatural Wise Academy. It's as simple as that. Because if you've not paid the price, the power only kicks in after price has been paid. Not only corporately, but individually after price has been paid. What is the price? Redemption. What is the price? Crucifixion. What is the price? Dying to self. That is the price. After price has been paid and obedience at every point in time, it is now the season God is saying, prophesy, it is wedding time. So for you that have heard the word of God, for you that fear God, for you that have stood with God, for you that have waited on God, for you that are still to believe in God, he is saying, this is your time to prophesy because the power is about to kick in because Jesus went in 40 days and 40 nights. Until God says something, the spirit does nothing. Did you hear me? So that means that until God says something through his spirit, and until God says something through his word, and until God says something through you. You see, you are the vehicle through which God is now speaking. So shall my word be, Isaiah 55 verse 11, that goes forth what? Out of my mouth. It shall not return void. It shall accomplish that for which it has been sent. How does it go out of the mouth of God? Through your mouth. How does it appear in time? Through you. God is in eternity. So how does his word appear in time? Through you. Through your mouth. So can you see your vital components? God had to ask permission of Mary for Jesus to come. He couldn't just impregnate her until she said, let it be unto me by your word. She could not be impregnated. You are a vital component. Say to yourself, I am a vital component of the miracle. You see, miracles are worked. Miracles don't happen. They are worked. The Bible says, and he worked miracles because there is a component of man and there's a component of God. And so God works with man. In Mark 16, 20, it says, as they went preaching the gospel, which is a form of prophesying, amen, God or the Lord worked with them with the accompanying signs. And so it means that the spirit of God who is in you and also with you is waiting for you to also be your, the vital component of your own miracle. You are part and parcel of the miracle. You're a miracle worker and supernatural wise and not natural wise. They're not just getting themselves prepared in the natural. They're also getting themselves prepared in the spiritual. They operate supernaturally. Why? It is supernatural wise, remember, uh, to marriage what the bride of Christ is to Jesus Christ. 
as he is, so are we in this world. I love that scripture. As Jesus is, so are you in this world. And so irrespective of whatever it is you believe or whatever state you are in, know that you're being trained up to become a supernatural woman, to operate in the supernatural. Every single one who has gone through anything in the Bible, they went through things not only by faith, but their faith connected them to the power of the supernatural. And so we read in Hebrews chapter 11 of the people Amen. Who are in the hall of faith? We read the things that happened. He said, By faith, Abraham did this. By faith, Moses did this. By faith, Joshua did this. By faith, women received their dead back. By faith, amen. And so it's important for you to understand faith activates the supernatural. It activates. And so it's not about God doing something for you. It is about God doing something through you because you are being transformed into a supernatural wife. You are the one that God is using as the component. You are the component, the important and essential component in the miracle. Amen. Of your wedding, of your marriage, in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. And so in Matthew 25, verse 6, it was prophesied the king is coming. It was prophesied that bridegroom is coming. So God does not just send his bridegrooms. God does not just send his kings. He prophesies it. He always prophesies it. He said, tell the bride of Christ and tell the foolish and the wise, amen, whoever is waiting for the marriage, that the bridegroom is on his way. He says, at midnight, and at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And so that parable is telling us that yes, you waited, and yes, you got tired, and yes, you got frustrated. But at the end of the day, the announcement is coming again for you to rise up. And so this is why I'm saying supernatural wives arise for you to rise up. You've got to get ready. You've got to trim your wicks. You've got to pay the price because the power is flowing. It's already flowing. Just over the weekend, three different people were connected with their spouse. I received three testimonies just over the weekend. Last week, how many of you were testifying that God has now connected you? Listen, the spirit of God is moving and he's saying it's wedding time. It is either we jump into the pool of Bethsaida and we make sure when the waters are being stirred, receiving our miracle, receiving our healing, or we continue in this mindset. You have to talk to yourself, talk to yourself and tell yourself, girl, I am not missing out. Girl, stop complaining. Even I was saying something to myself um, over the weekend and then I have to talk to myself. You may feel physically tired, but stop complaining. Stop murmuring. You've got to speak to yourself to put down all of those issues. Put down. This is not that time. Listen, Jesus did not ask permission to come. He did not ask the man permission at the bull of Bethsaida. He simply went up to him. Do you want to be made well? You've been here for 38 years. None of you have been waiting. 38 years. I bet you a very few people under the sound of my voice have waited 38 years for anything. Talk less of marriage. And if you have, then you know full well that you yourself deviated somewhere. We all know that God is good. We all know what David did. We all know what Moses did. So we all know that none of us apart from Jesus are perfect and we deviate. And when we deviate, we say we are waiting. But God says, no, you went off into somebody else. You went off into an Ishmael. You went off into fornication. You went off into unbelief. You went off into offense. Listen, we all know what flesh does. And so in the wait, you've got to factor in the delay. In the wait, you've got to factor in the denials. In the wait, you've got to factor in the deviations. In the wait, you've got to factor in the disobedience. In the wait, you've got to factor in your brethren who are in unbelief, all right, that you refuse to detach because it's such a good sister, such a good friend, it's my family, etc. And God is saying for the power to flow, Jesus himself, praise God, he took people aside. Even he himself set himself aside every night in order for power to flow every day. Amen. That is the system. So if Christ himself is not going to tolerate unbelief and rebuked it among his own disciples, even when he resurrected from the dead, he rebuked it from Thomas, from doubting Thomas. He said, why are you hard of heart? So Jesus is not going to tolerate it now the same way he didn't tolerate it then. The spirit of God moves and the power of God is moving over this month. But he's saying prophesy what? It is wedding time. It is wedding time. It is wedding time for you and in the dispensation of the body of Christ. It is wedding time. Every believer should be preparing themselves for the return of Christ, which means you need to get into alignment for your assignment. Goodness knows how many years you have left. 
You may have five, you may have 10, we have 15, you may have 50. We have no idea how long, but what we know is time is being missed out. Time is going, amen? And God is saying it is now time to get into alignment for your assignment. It is time to bring forth those children. It is time to get about the Father's business. It is time to accomplish the things you've been put on this earth for. At the end of the day, God is in eternity. You are in time and every one of us is getting older, not younger, amen? So God is saying it is time. It is time. He's got a people ready. He's got a people prepared. It is time. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. And so in Matthew 25, verse 67, we hear the announcement was made. The prophecy came. First Thessalonians 4.16. A shout, the voice of an archangel, and the trumpet was the prophecy. Amen. What does it say? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise. So what was the key? What was the cue for resurrection power to flow? What was the cue for rapture to happen? What was the cue for the dead to rise up? It was the prophecy of the shout. It was the prophecy of the voice of the archangel. It was the prophecy of the trumpet of God. And so I'm showing you these things to show you the pattern in the scripture, that if there's a pattern consistently in the scripture, it means you and I must align. You are not going to get away with just saying the miracle should just happen. I'll wait and say, listen, you will remain there because the dead that had rose. They rose. And so the prophecy is precedes power. Prophesying loses power. It loses acceleration. Amen. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 47. We all know the scripture from verse one to four. He said, son of man, can these dry bones live? They were in a valley in a dark place, in a depressed place. Can these dry bones live? So when Ezekiel began to prophesy the resurrection and the restoration of Israel, they were not in a good state. Maybe your marriage, your man, your husband, your wife is not in a good state. Maybe your circumstance is not in a good state. Your finance is not in a good state. We all know the body of Christ is not currently in a good state. But that doesn't mean that it won't get there. And how would it get there? By performing the miracle of the mouth, prophesying. It will get there as you open up your mouth and allow God in his presence at his time that he's now said, amen, to begin prophesying, to be continue prophesying. So he said, prophesy, Ezekiel 37, 4. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say to them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord prophesy upon the dry circumstance, prophesy upon your dry hopes, prophesy upon the circumstance of the dryness of the heart of your husband or of your wife, prophesy the marriage, prophesy for those of you who are trusting God for conception over your womb. You have to speak, not just pray about it, speak to it. Jesus said, speak to this mountain. Don't just pray to the mountain or pray about the mountain. He said, prophesy to the mountain, speak to the mountain, be moved into the sea. Be cast out of my way and be moved into the sea. And he said, if you have a little bit of faith, meaning you have a little bit of pure faith without doubting in your heart, in Mark 11 from 23 and 24, he said, what? It will happen. It will happen. So it is not about the multitude of faith. It is about the consistency and the purity. It is about removing doubts. It is about the consistency. It is about the continuation of prophesying until the power flows. Until the power flows. Amen? Yes. So he said, yes, it may be dry. Prophesy upon the dry bones. And then he said, okay, I've done it. But still, they're not living. He said, continue. Amen? Ezekiel 37 verse 9. Continue. Now, you've prophesied to the dry bones. There was a rattling. And now the dry bones have come together. Okay, what's the next part of the operation? They're not alive. Continue prophesying. So we look at circumstance and we don't continue. God is saying prophesy it is wedding time until you enter into your wedding day. Do you understand? Prophesy it is wedding time until you yourself are saying, do you take this man as your lawfully wedded husband? I do. Do you take this woman as your lawfully wedded wife? I do. Until that day comes, prophesy. Until you conceive, prophesy. Prophesy to your womb. So he said, prophesy to the winds, prophesy, amen, to the power of God, to the winds, and the power of God will breathe on them. 
He said unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy son of man, and say to the wind, thus says the Lord God, come forth from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon this slain that they may live. And so God is saying, irrespective of what you see, prophesy. If the first part has been done and there is a connection, now prophesy the life into that union. Prophesy the life into your marriage. Prophesy love to arise. Prophesy affection to come forth. Prophesy whatever it is God is saying to you, depending on your stage in the process. You may be in the valley of dry bones. You may be at the point you need life, more life and communication to come into your union, to come into your relationship. Prophesy. Why is God doing it? Why can't it just happen? It is happening. But God wants to use you as a vehicle because he's training you as his son and daughter. He's training you as a king and a priest. How are you going to rule and reign as a queen with your husband if you can't begin to rule and reign with Christ the king? Come on, people of God. This is not about you just entering in and being happy and being married. This is about God being happy to raise up a supernatural wife. And that's why he says, do you want to be married? Okay, there's something called supernatural marriage. This is the way to prepare. This is who I give it to. This is what to do so that that way I can also benefit. It's not just about you benefiting. It's about the kingdom of heaven benefiting. You have to contend and then you'll be able to stand. And also I found out that when we fought for something hard enough, we actually appreciate it more. It is time. I do understand the heartbreaks that go alongside this whole thing. Because remember, I told you, 1998 is when God gave me my promise of supernatural marriage in the car when I was in my first separation. 2021 is when I actually received it after three separations, including five years separation in my former marriage and an 11 year divorce. So I do understand I have cried many tears, but I'm encouraging you now because I'm a midwife. And I was saying to you last week, midwives cannot get emotional. We can't afford to. The mothers are already emotional. There's already groaning going on. The Bible says, amen, that nation creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. So there's already groaning going on in your spirit. There's groaning going on in your heart. There's groaning going on in the nations. There's groaning going on in creation. And so the the midwives, I've got to focus. We've got to focus. And so we're here to prophesy. We've got to focus and get the baby out. We've got to focus until we're celebrating. We've got to focus until you tell me, woman of God, I'm engaged. Woman of God, I'm connected. Woman of God, I'm married. That's what I'm looking for. Amen. In fact, really, most of us, we we celebrate not just the engagement, but we celebrate the marriage. In this ministry, praise God, we celebrate many marriages. Because I know sometimes even in engagement, even in engagement, we still pray through. Even in engagement, prophesy your way through. This business of one and two year engagement and you're sitting down there in the flesh in fornication. Okay, you can get married that way, but it's not supernatural marriage because once it's defiled, it will not be accepted in the supernatural marriage grade. It's as simple as that, all right? Praise God. Because God is using supernatural wives and supernatural husbands, glory be to God, for his own end time purposes, for them to become warrior brides and supernatural wives. Amen? Yes. So after he prophesied to the wind, what happened? There were graves. He said, okay, prophesy to the graves. Can you see? Ezekiel 37, 12. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, to people that feel their hopes are dead, to people that feel that they're in the graves, that God has overlooked or abandoned them, or everything has disappointed them, and everyone may have disappointed them, and things have not come out the way you thought. But God also said to Ezekiel, I understand. Nevertheless, prophesy. Therefore prophesy, Ezekiel 37, 12, and say unto them, thus says the Lord God, behold, Oh, my people, I will open your graves, amen, and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. I will. I have said it to you before. I've said it to you in times past. I'm saying it again. It is wedding time. I will open your graves and cause you to come up. God will open up the grave of disappointment and cause you to come out. The grave of imprisonment, the grave of separation, divorce, widowhood. He will open it up. And he says, I will. 
and cause you to come up and bring you into your land, O Israel. Bring you into your land of Beulah, O Zion. I will. Remember, he told Isaiah 62, he said, I will not rest for Zion's sake and for Jerusalem's. I will not hold my peace. I will not rest until her salvation goes forth as a lamp that burns. And then he said what? In, his, in, in Isaiah 62 from verse 8, he said, those of you that make mention of the name of God, do not keep silent. I've set watchmen on your walls. Do not keep silent. Pray night and day. Day and night. Luke 18, Jesus said, men are always to pray day and night. He said, even though God may bear long with you, it may take a little bit of time, but he said, God will do it speedily. So that means that the wait may be long, but the manifestation will be quick. That's what it means. Because when the power moves, the manifestation will be quick. How will this thing happen, said Mary? He said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. And then the person who is to be born, you will conceive, will be called Jesus, the Messiah. Do you see? And so the way was long. So the Torah was a prophecy of the coming of the Messiah. Right from Genesis 3, 15. The Torah was a prophecy. So God is announcing this season as wedding season. He's announcing it. He decreed it in December. It is wedding season. And he said to me when I was meditating on this word, I didn't tell you it's wedding season. I told you it's wedding time. There is a difference. Ecclesiastes 3.1 tells us, to everything and every purpose under heaven, there is a season. So you know the season. And then I narrow it down to a time. So God is saying he's narrowed it down to the time. This is now your time. You are in the season already. This is now your time. Can you see? There is a difference. He made it very clear. He said, prophesy it is wedding time. Don't even prophesy I'm getting married. Prophesy it is wedding time. Meaning it is time to be married. It is time to put on your dress. It is time to prepare. It is time to purify. It is time to trim your lamps. It is time, all right, to make sure you trim your wicks. If you don't have oil, you better go and buy fast. There is a price to be paid. And the Spirit of God has told us to prepare. We will open up, amen. But those of you who can get onto this one, you will come onto the next one. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Because there were specific things that our sisters have gone through. And some of our brothers, there are specific things. I went through them. You are going to go through them. And you must prepare yourself and enter in. But the good thing of God is he's a God of whosoever. I was preaching yesterday in Union City Church, you know, and I was saying that the, the, the equal opportunity of God, he's a God of whosoever. I never want you to discount yourself based on circumstance. Because you see, unless you're not willing to hear and to heed, unless you're not willing to obey and to fully follow God, for that way, nobody can help you. <laughs> that one, nobody can help you because when it came to them crossing over into the promised land, even God could not help those who would not fully hear and heed. Even God, those who kept on grumbling and complaining, in the end, he himself disinherited them. He himself detached them. You are not going to hold up your brethren anymore, okay? So 20 years and older, go in. And only Joshua and Caleb of the first regime, all right, and of the old regime went in. So even God cannot force somebody into their set time if they won't hear and heed and prepare and wholly follow God. Nothing God can do about it. But for those who are willing to do that, you are qualified, period. You are qualified. Amen. That's why I always say that don't allow the enemy to steal from you the promise of the promised land because God is looking for more, not less. Amen. Praise the Lord to walk in the authority of a supernatural husband and a supernatural wife. Praise God. First Samuel 10, 6. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee and thou shalt prophesy with them and thou shalt be turned into another man in the King James. That was the calling of Saul to become king. Saul in the Old Testament went out looking for donkeys and he came back with the calling to become a king. And there was an announcement by the prophet Samuel that when you get to a set place, you will see prophets join them because how you're going to be ushered into your next season is by prophesying and you'll be turned. So as you prophesy, God will turn men into kings. 
As we prophesy, God will turn men into husbands. As you prophesy, God will turn divorcees into married women. As you prophesy, God will turn things around. As you prophesy, people, God will bring dead hopes alive. Can you see? He said, as you go, the spirit of the Lord will come upon you when you meet prophets. And as you join them and begin to engage in what they engage in, prophesying will release the power for you to become and for you to be transformed into another man, into the man that can rule. Oh, he doesn't look like, oh, he's not calling me. Oh, the way he's behaving. Oh, I don't understand why he can prophesy, prophesy, character shall rise up, conviction shall rise up, love shall rise up, restoration shall rise up, repentance shall rise up, amen, prophesy, whatever it is, prophesy, and I can feel, even as I'm prophesying, that some of you, the pain of believing again, that God is saying, prophesy and allow my power to move, prophesy and expect a miracle, prophesy and see my hands, etc. Why? This is the season and the time, so you're now coming in and engaging, not only in in what you believe, but in what God has said, amen, prophesy again in Jesus' name and the power will flow. They will be turned into another man, into another man. For those of you who believe in God to build your marriage or to rebuild your marriage that was broken down, became dysfunctional, estranged or divorced, is Ezra 6.14. Ezra 6.14. It says, and the elders of the Jews built and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Edom. And they built and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel and according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. So he's saying that the Jews were able to overcome captivity, were able to overcome negativity, were able to overcome opposition, were able to overcome all of the resistance they had to go through through three regimes or two regimes, actually, Cyrus and Darius, who was Artaxerxes, amen, who was over to, able to overcome delay, disruption, and all the things they went through. Remember the Lord showed us in Ezra chapter 1 to Ezra chapter 6, there was a change of regime over many years, over, I believe, 20 to 30 years. So you can imagine the kind of disruptions and delays that were happening. Meanwhile, Cyrus in his first year prophesied, go out and build the house of God in Jerusalem. But all of these things came against them. But it says they were able to prosper and to finish it through the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Edo. So prophesying releases encouragement. It encourages your spirit, your soul, your body, your mind, your faith. As you prophesy, the power of God in, in, equips you, encourages you, and helps you to sus be sustained until you build, until you prosper, until the thing you seek is, is ha has happened, all right? Until the thing you're prophesying has come to pass. So prophesying does a lot of things. It ushers in the power of God. It ushers in your set times and seasons, but it also encourages and, and enables you to be sustained until the promise is fulfilled. Glory be to God. Jesus prophesied that the sickness of Lazarus, amen, in John 11, 1 to 4, is not unto death, but for the glory of God. Now he still dies. Sometimes I prayed before, but it still didn't go your way. Jesus prophesied irrespective of what happened. And it still died. It still didn't work. God is saying by prophecy, by what he decreed ahead, by what he prophesied, the power now flowed when he said, come back. When he said, come out of that grave. When he said, come back to life. So as you prophesy as the wife, amen, and call your husband back to life, back to faith, back to the presence of God, back to you, call back the connection, all right? Praise God. As you prophesy, the power will now flow based on the prayers and the prophecy that has gone ahead in Jesus' name. And then the second activation is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is also a prophecy. And I want us to break bread with this. It's also a prophecy. John 6, verse 46, okay? Praise God. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming towards him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. He himself knew there was not enough bread. 
there was not enough provision for all of the people and the multitudes that had a thirst, that had a hunger, that had to be fed. And the Spirit of God is saying, you know the stats. You know the stats of men. You know the stats of marriages. You know the stats, which I've read to you, many of these stats, stats, okay? You know the stats of singles in the church. You may know the stats in your family. But irrespective, thanksgiving is an acceleration. It is a form of prophecy. So what did he do? He said he knew, but he tested Philip. Have you learned enough from me to also do what I do? Have you learned enough from me to also become a supernatural man? Now we know this is the Philip that later on was caught away as he was preaching to the eunuch. So this was the Philip that learned from Jesus how to walk in the supernatural. This is what God is saying. He is testing many of us that listen, have you not learned what to do by now? Have you not learned how to walk with me by now? Yes, it may seem like there's not enough in terms of statistics, but are you going to trust statistics or are you going to activate the supernatural? Are you going to activate the power of the spirit to flow? This this is what God is saying. And so he's saying thanksgiving is a form of prophecy. It's also an activation for the release of miracles, especially marriage miracles. Marriage miracles come I mean, by prophecy and by thanksgiving and by sacrifice. That's how they come. And by sacrifice, praise God, and by the environment. So let's jump down to John chapter 6, verse 10 to 14. Then Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number, about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down and likewise the fish as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so nothing is lost. Therefore, they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus said, this is truly the prophet who is coming to the world. So they called him a prophet, not just based on the miracles he performed, but based on his thanksgiving. You see, he prophesied through thanksgiving. He prophesied there'll be more than enough through giving thanks and breaking of bread. And so that's what we're going to do now. He said when they had eaten, there was more than enough and he did not stop multiplying until they were filled. And so the power of God is moving over this season and over this generation until everyone has been satisfied by being filled, until everyone has been connected. The power of God will continue to flow. If you remember in the ministry of Elijah, the widow, the Bible says that the jar of oil will not stop flowing. The power continued to flow until the famine was over. And I decree and declare over you that the power of God over unions, over marriages, over reconciliations, over the divorcees, over singles, and over those who are trusting God, not only reconciliation, resurrection, restoration, but also those trusting God for divine conception, the power will continue to flow until the famine is over. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy now, I prophesy now that the power will continue to flow from our generation into the next generation, down to three, four generations, to a thousand generations. The power of the supernatural marriage shall continue to flow into the church, that the power of God can be reset. The foundation of God shall be reset again in Jesus' mighty name. That this frustration that three generations of women have gone through and of godly women have gone through will never come again. This hemorrhaging of men will stop in the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy it because God is able to feed not only you, is able to usher not only you in, is able to make sure there's enough left over for the next generation until all were filled. And they said a prophet has come. And I continue to prophesy. I've been saying it for 2017 and I'll keep saying it that this in three generations in one generation are going to be restored into marriage. We've seen people at the age of 72 getting married, 68 getting married, women, 62 getting married, women and men, praise God, obviously, praise God, 50s getting married, 40s getting married, 30s getting married, 20s getting married. Do not tell me there is a set time or a set type of woman or man who cannot enter into supernatural marriage. We've seen people having children at 90 years old. We've seen people in the Bible having children when they're elderly. We've seen barren people all of a sudden having multiples. Come on, people of God. And so we serve a supernatural God. And in our day, the Spirit of God told us, he said to me, in Sarah's generation, she got pregnant, all right, at a 
later time as a mature woman with one child. In our day, the glory of the latter house is greater than the former in that the elder women shall have multiples to the glory of God. And so God wants to showcase his power through your life. It is up to you to prophesy as a single so that you become a wife. Prophesy as a single so you become a husband. Prophesy your way to your wedding day. Prophesy your way into your marriage. Prophesy your way into the next level. Prophesy your way into that ministry. Prophesy your way in business. Prophesy your way into becoming a parent. Prophesy your womb to open. Prophesy your seed to come alive. Prophesy it is wedding time in Jesus' name. Alignment is the assignment. And as we give thanks, there shall be a multiplication. Amen. And they will know that a prophet has come into the world. They will know that God is real. They will know that Jesus is real. They will know. They will know by your testimony. You see, if it was all natural, there's no glory to God. But because it's supernatural, there is glory to God. If you could get married the natural way, you wouldn't need the supernatural. But the issue is because of the issues that has been happening spiritually, we all need and rely on the supernatural. But the glory goes to who? The Lord. Hallelujah. If Lazarus had not died, there would be no glory to God. The glory went to Jesus by the resurrection of Lazarus. And so your life has been preserved for the glory of God. Your marriage has been preserved for the glory of God. And your wedding day has been preserved for the glory of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Prophesying performs miracles with your mouth. It offers God thanksgiving in expectation. Amen. And it advances, hastens your blessings and accelerates your breakthroughs and miracles because it releases life. Glory be to God in Jesus' name. So let us break bread now. And as we prophesy, it is wedding time. I decree and I declare over you that it is your wedding time in Jesus' name. It is your time to come into alignment. I prophesy the power of the spirit shall move over your circumstance to awaken, to reconnect dead bones. Amen. We prophesy to the winds and the spirit of God shall breathe life into your union again, into your marriage again. Praise God. We prophesy it is wedding time that everything, the venues and everything needed, the resource, the finance, the favor shall come together. We prophesy to the nations. We prophesy to the constellations to favor you. This is your set season and time in Jesus mighty name. We prophesy, amen, that the power of God shall sustain or the hand of God shall move against the evils or the, the wicked ones in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We prophesy the hand of God shall destroy them. The hand of God shall restrain them in Jesus mighty name and shall allow you to go through. We prophesy to the Red Sea or to the Jordan, whichever one is required and you will cross over in Jesus mighty name. We prophesy that there will be no power under heaven. There will be no power on the earth. There will be no power under the earth or in the sea that shall be able to withstand them and the power of God working on your behalf in Jesus mighty name because it is wedding time. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us eat, people of God. God bless you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are miracle workers. And as we drink of the virtue of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, the grace of Jesus doesn't only cleanse us, but releases the virtue of Jesus into us. That's what's happening anytime we break bread. He said, when you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have eternal life. Life of Christ, his virtue is restored. You are redeemed from not only sin, but from captivity. Your destiny of marriage, your miracles are being released as we drink of the blood of the Lamb now, in Jesus' name. The life of Christ moves over your circumstance, moves over your husband, moves over you as a wife in the name of Jesus. And miracles begin to take place. You prophesy to the communication, connection, reconnection, prophesy affection, prophesy or alignment, whatever it is that is stopping you, prophesy a resurrection from the grave. Whatever circumstance you're in, you must prophesy and then continue like Ezekiel until it comes to pass. That's how it is. Amen. You are the John the Baptist of your miracle of marriage. And the power of God is needed, wants to move, but is waiting for you to speak and to prophesy. Lord, as we drink of your blood, I say thank you for restoring virtue. Thank you for restoring faith. Thank you for healing pain. Thank you, Father God, for accelerating us 
and accelerating every woman and every union and every marriage into their set time in Jesus' name. Thank you for the celebrations of marriages all across this summer and beyond the rest of this year. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us drink. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Keep yourself tuned. Amen. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned to, I'm talking about to the Holy Spirit. Stay tuned to what God is saying because each and every step, he's teaching you even as he ushers you into your set time of marriage. In Jesus' name. May God bless you all. Amen. And cause his face to shine upon you all in the mighty name of Jesus, even as he administers his grace, love, and his power over your life. In Jesus' name. Amen.